Welcome back to our Rise Prime Time with me, Sulaiman Aled, and this is the point on the program. I introduce uh, my guest analyst who's here to give a perspective on the issue so far. I'm joined in the studio by Rise News analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku. Uh, good to see you and thanks for your good time. See you Quite too, a Suleiman. lot yes. we have just uh, uh, taken off the plate, but again, let's still see if we can pick some of the bones uh, left. Uh, let's start from where we left off, uh, issues of security. Uh, but again, before we delve into the aspect of the mining extractive industry, let's talk about uh, the talk out there uh, that uh, Governor MFLA is still in uh, DSS custody, and of course, uh, uh, Abdul Rashid Bawa is still there, and Nigerians are saying the two weeks uh, given to the DSS, the extra two weeks, uh, has since elapsed. Well, I mean, your, your guest said a lot about that. Um there is a perception, right? Um, you could say that some people feel that um, the arrest and detention of uh, former CBN governor uh, Godwin Emefiele... I think, I think we, we can just say suspended CBN governor because well, he, he, I don't <laughs> think he's been removed, so he's suspended. Well, so, okay, suspended, uh, but I don't think he's going back there. Uh, it's a new administration, so they're looking for someone else. Um, you know, some could argue that it's like the president is on a vendetta mission um, because during the election, he openly voiced his discontent with Emefiele. According to him, um, the redesign policy of the Naira was specifically targeted as him as a candidate of the APC. So there was some sour grapes there. Uh, you would imagine that immediately he got inaugurated, um, Emefiele was arrested, and uh, some would say that... Um, the president is getting his pound of flesh, although DSS was already after a Mephiele, <laughs> even before. Before the election. Yes, yeah. So uh, there were a lot of people after him because of the policies, uh, everything that he did uh, during his tenure, two terms. I mean, there are so many CBN governors that didn't get two terms, so it was surprising that he got it. Again, if you're after a Mephiele, then you have to go back to his boss. Most of the things, if not all the things he, he did, had approval from his boss former boss, President Muhammad Buhari. So um, at the same time, we go then to, to Bawa. Yes, uh, there were allegations and accusations against Bawa. A former governor accused him of uh, asking him for money. Um, it's not new. His predecessor, Ibrahim Magu, was removed under similar circumstances. And the one before uh, Magu, Ibrahim Lamode, was uh, actually fired by President Muhammad Buhari. So it's a very hot seat. At the end of the day, um, when you arrest and detain people for extended periods of time, you really have to be careful because you want to follow due process and you want to be seen as a society that obeys laws and others and does the right thing. Mm. So if um, you think they have uh, questions and answer, charge them to court and they will have an opportunity to defend themselves. And uh, uh, the other big one has to do with um, the issue of uh, the extractive industry uh, and some mind-boggling mind revelation by Aliu Gebi there talking about uh, some of our natural resources being enjoyed by people outside the shores of Nigeria, gold and the, uh, and the likes. Uh, speak to us on that because I, my question uh, to him was uh, are the security agencies uh, uh, well, handicapped or looking elsewhere while these people not ordinary Nigerians, uh, go dig deep, deep and get these things out uh, on a light aircraft. I was struggling to understand his point. Um, why is that? Um, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 1999 uh, says that the uh, Nigerian Minerals and Mining Act, um, the federal government has the title to all minerals beneath or upon any land within Nigeria. And then also the mining regulation is handled by the Ministry of Solid Minerals Department. So that's a federal government ministry. It is not state. He was laying a lot of responsibility at the state level. The federal government owns every resource, it's minerals, under the ground, even if whatever you are in the country. It hasn't changed. Yes, it hasn't changed. So that means whatever is happening there, it has the powers. It doesn't need the permission from the state government to go in there and sort it out. Look at the Niger Delta, for instance, and oil. The federal government didn't need permission from 
the Delta State to set up military operations or Navy operations to go in there and fight against um, the Niger Delta militant, you know, because this, this oil belongs to all Nigerians and the revenue is needed by the federal government. The same thing is supposed to apply to resources in Zamfara or any other part of Nigeria. It is owned by Nigeria. It is owned by everybody. It means that if there are untoward things happening on ground there, there shouldn't be excuses from the federal government. Oh, the states do not allow you to come in. Oh, this is happening. If you have the will, you can go in there and clean up the mess. So the federal government has a lot of responsibility. Of course, the state as well. How do you allow a state to decide what determines, except you want to change the constitution, meaning that every mineral that is found in any part of Nigeria is owned by the state. They mine it, they bring in the investments, invite investors, and then they pay taxes to the federal government. If you want to do that, that will actually be real restructuring. Then you will see that some states in Nigeria will be bigger than the federal government. That is actually true federalism. So if that has not changed the constitution, the, the federal government should squarely bear the responsibility and do something about it. Well, I think at this point, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time, Dr. Constance Ikoku. Many thanks for speaking with us here on Arise Prime Time. You're welcome.